in an organization, it might be profit is everything and you're just a cog in the wheel, which is treating you transactionally. And it's definitely top down and external motivation. That's why I love this picture of somebody pulling the puppet strings. That's what external motivation is. And what we settle for when we use control is compliance, not commitment. So here are some ways we do control. One is called command and control in, in workplaces, but it's also just the do what I say or else. It's do it or you're, you know, I'm going to sick your dad on you or whatever it is, depending on what environment you're in. You're trying to cultivate compliance, but what you cultivate is resentful compliance or you really tick people off and they say, no, I won't, you can't make me and they rebel and resist. Another one is a surprise to people. It's actually a control tactic to dangle carrots in front of people and say, I'll give you this if you do that. And so people become more self-centered and competitive and they'll rush past quality. Now, this is another control tactic. It's kind of like the verbal version of quadrant one and quadrant two. This is where somebody is assuming and presuming that I'm more deserving than you are. And therefore I have the right to bestow my judgment on you. The intention is you're supposed to please me. That's the goal, please me. So what you create are people who become brown nosers and people pleasers, or they get ticked off and think, who died and made you God? And then they rebel and resist because they don't like that feeling of being judged. Even favorably, they don't like it. Here's another one that surprises people. And it's when we pamper and spoil people. It's when we make assumptions about them that they're incapable, that they can't do, that we hover and enable and overcompensate for them. You want to remember this saying, what you rescue, you make weak. And the reason this is so costly is because when you start conditioning somebody that they're incapable, they will believe you. And the reason these are harmful to us is because it's the puppet strings. It's I'm going to do everything. You sit back and just do what I want from you. So what do we do instead? So when you're focused on building responsibility within people, and in our model, it's everybody from top to bottom. By the time my kids were five years old, they all knew how to run a family meeting. People are important. You have a conviction and a commitment to their development and to the purpose within each person. And instead of being transactional with people, we're relational with people. And instead of having a hierarchy, it's shared power. And it's all about developing internal or intrinsic motivation, not the puppet strings. And you go for commitment, not compliance. So what does that look like? In this model, Again, whether it's in your home, your school, your community, a police department, a workplace, anything, the belief you hold about people is that they are great or they want to be great. And if they're not acting great, the assumption is what system would, needs to be put in place in order for these four core needs to be met adequately. The goal of leaders is that everyone becomes mentored regularly. They get feedback, they get support, they get moved from awareness into self-management and awareness in, in relationships to managing those relationships. And it's, it's called the accountability, instead of being accountable to me, the big bad boss, whether it's again, personal or professional, everybody's taught how to own what's theirs to own. And by that, we mean everybody learns how to manage their relationships, their productivity, their engagement levels, their purpose, their values, their visions, the, everything. What you cultivate are people that become self-managing. They show up with their A game. And the reason this is so strikingly different is because it's all about developing people from the inside out. 